Julia, uh, uh, Juliet Kayam, uh, CNN uh, national security analyst, is joining us as well. Julia, I mean, it's kind of the left side of your screen. I mean, it's kind of a remarkable shot. Uh, you know, a gate yeah. to Columbia. You see some protesters. I don't know if they're students or not who are on the outside. Uh, well, I'm not sure actually what side of the gate they are on. I assume we're, our camera is on the outside, so I assume maybe. Oh, I don't know where they are, uh, but with a flare on yeah. one of the front entrances to Columbia. CNN doing the Columbia. Right. This is so. I, uh, I've been on the phone with people in Columbia. I've got family ties to it. I know people that are working for the university. Uh, this is uh, this is uh, in an odd way. It's an odd way to describe it. This is a bit of a de-escalation, given the escalation that happened, um, uh, which is. Uh, to tell the students to disperse first. This is the difference in what we saw two weeks ago. What the police need to do in all these situations, if they are used, which I have been saying for the last two weeks is a last resort, which, which is, is the case here, uh, is you got to give these students an off-ramp. And it looks like that is actually what happened. They are off the campus, and now they are in, in, in public property in which this kind, of, this kind of behavior, if it's disruptive, will be arrested. Uh, and you get the pool of people that the police are going to arrest on campus to be relatively small. And I think that's what you, at, at least from the pictures and what our reporters are saying, that is what you have. That, uh, none of this is good or bad, but just hey, in the pool of bad hey, things that could happen. Julia, <laughs> Julia, yeah. sorry, let me just jump in. I just got a clarification that the shot on the left is actually at City College. That's not a Columbia game. Oh, okay. So that's where the good. Yeah, is I didn't recognize it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that, that is at City College, which is about 20 blocks north. North, right. uh, from the and so this is, this is the dynamics of what we're experiencing now, which is, of course, all these schools are, are feeding off, off of each other, or the students are. So, of course, especially in New York, students or other campuses are going to have to pay notice. I want to do some good news here, because uh, this is stressful, and you do worry about whatever you think about these kids uh, or these students. No one wants them dead or violence to happen. And that is, you know, as a parent, I'm saying that. As a parent of college students, I'm saying that. Uh, this protest, however, became a trespass and a criminal trespass. That is not appropriate. The college gave many off ramps and now is resorting to this. In the good news phase, I just have to say we are seeing, as I've been reporting for the last week on sort of what's happening at these colleges and universities, there actually is tremendous de-escalation going on throughout the nation. So Columbia remains an outlier. Um, uh, the people, um, uh, 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 and so hopefully they can de-escalate this. But we do know that when colleges and universities are giving students off ramps and engaging, they de-escalated it. And you look at the Wesleyans, the Browns, the Northwesterns, others. Um, and so as a national phenomenon, uh, we are, we are, um, uh, we, are, we are looking at a, 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 a sort of the, the attempt to isolate the problem at Columbia and then for the non-students, which it seems to me schools have got to get better about access control. It's ridiculous uh, that you have so many non-students able to, to penetrate these colleges and universities if they're under this threat environment um, and to arrest those. But I, I, don't, I don't love any of this, but in terms of what I like, what I'm seeing, they started with um, with de-escalation, de dispersed. Or you saw students dispersing. They did not want to get arrested. And now you've limited the pool of people or students or non-students that the police have to interact with. It's in my world, you're just looking for better news over bad news. And so far, um, uh, the dispersal of this is going as we would anticipate, which is which is, uh, you know, sort of a, a do not escalate too soon. This is what the police did a couple weeks ago, and, and we're seeing a sort of lessons learned. Now we can figure out how everyone got themselves into this position another time, but nobody needs to get hurt tonight. That's the most important thing. I say that as a security analyst and as a mother, um, and so hopefully we will continue to see this. It is remarkable, just the reports of the, the number of non-students who yeah. have been arrested and who have been involved in these demonstrations? It is, it is, it is, I, I, it is so inexplicable to me, uh, knowing what all of these colleges and universities have known, 
um, that uh, that they were, you know, access control became sort of not not the first option. Police are not the first option. Your first option is uh, control the perimeter and protect all the students, uh, 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 um, uh, what, and in particular students who aren't engaged with this at all, right? We're in finals, we have graduations coming up. Um, and so uh, uh, the basic security and safety protocols that we owe the students, and in particular uh, uh, students that may feel intimidated by some of these protests, uh, was not afforded. And I should also say protections for the protester. I have been on air. Lawful protest is okay. It's what we expect in, in, at colleges and universities. Uh, we, we shouldn't lose our head about it. We also have to protect those students who are lawful. Uh, this got, this overnight got escalated, and the goal is to de-escalate it. And it's the responsibility of, of everyone yeah. that that's the primary goal. Let's check in with Miguel Marquez, uh, who's been uh, outside monitoring this uh, activity. But Miguel, what, what are you seeing? Uh, where are you, and what are you seeing? We are on 114th, uh, just near Amsterdam Avenue. Police have moved us down here. This is the gate where most of the people being arrested so far uh, have been coming out. We haven't seen any in the last 20 minutes or so, but if you look down Amsterdam Avenue, sorry, this will be a little uh, bit of a trick. Uh, there are protesters all the way down there. One of the buses, there was one bus filled with arrestees that tried to get out. That's where Julia was, where they sat down and tried to block that bus from getting out. They cleared them out and moved them on. Another bus then went up Amsterdam Avenue and uh, that's where the gate on Amsterdam Avenue is, and Hamilton Hall is just, it's just up, I'm going to step in front of the camera, it's just up that way on Amsterdam Avenue, and that's where most of the activity on that side of campus is. Down here, we still see uh, buses uh, that are waiting for more people who have been arrested uh, to be picked up. You know, this comes at the worst time for Columbia. It was very clear they wanted to move this out. They, they had just finished their last day of classes. They're in the middle of finals, and commencement is in a couple of weeks. And as you know, the, that entire area where the encampment was and the entire central lawn of Columbia University is set up for a massive co commencement. Many of the people graduating this year, the administration's pointed out, didn't have their high school graduations because of the pandemic, so they just really did not want to allow uh, this to happen. And you know, tonight... So far, while we hear chanting up and down the streets, and if you can look at the, uh, Ken, if you, if you move across to the, to the buildings over here, you can see the number of police officers who are still remain at the doors of every single one of the buildings along 114th because people are chanting, uh, people are upset uh, along this corridor, lots of students in these buildings, uh, and they are chanting their displeasure with happening here. Hold on one second. So, so NYPD is coming around to say that no tear gas has been used. Apparently, there is some reporting on social media that somebody may have used tear gas. Uh, they do say that they use flash flashbang grenades or other sort of means to to deflect or to to surprise uh, anybody that they may encounter. Uh, but they do not use tear gas. They said they use they're using flashbang uh, grenades uh, in there. So that gives you a sense of what is happening in Hamilton Hall as they as they make their way in uh, and try to, to, to make arrests and, and bring order back to Columbia University. Andrew. Miguel, we are staying on the story as it develops throughout the night. Right now, I want to hand things over to my colleague John Berman. Thank you so much, Anderson. And on your screen right now, you can see what we've been watching develop over the last hour or so. Police have moved into Columbia University oh. to move those pro-Palestinian demonstrators out of the building that they have occupied since last night. Hundreds and hundreds of law enforcement, you can see, have swarmed onto the campus, or in the case of the screen you're looking at right now, the picture you're looking at right now, just off campus. We have seen law enforcement move yeah. people onto buses, presumably under arrest. We've also seen the police simply move people off the campus and let them go on their way. Uh, we have